All right, everyone, we have a major tech news double header actually this morning about uh, the, the general fight of deplatforming and censorship that's emerging online. It's becoming a major issue, and you're, you're seeing larger and larger names now associated with the right, the left, everything in between, people who just want free speech, and then people like me or creators who just want to be fucking left alone to be able to make a fucking living. Uh, the, the things are heating up considerably. I literally was sparring with the Sleeping Giants account on Twitter last night over this and other issues. Um, you know, over, over the idea that, well, you know, uh, you know, uh, the far right, Nazis did terrible things, therefore somehow we need to deplatform the hate, even though a lot of the people being deplatformed are objectively not bigots. Uh, and uh, first and foremost, PayPal a few days ago this, uh, decided to deplatform Subscribestar. That is, you can still get your payouts. They're not taking new pledges at this time. They're like, you know, they threw up their hands, uh, unfortunately, uh, I think. But you can get your payout. So for those of you who donated, I am able to do that. I just have to put in, like, other info. I can't use PayPal to get the money. That's okay. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's really, it was a temporary stopgap. Gab is, is now rushing out a payment platform. And it looks like Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin are working together. Uh, they're saying within the next week or two, uh, possibly, they will have an alternative as well. Now, we'll see, of course, what form that takes, how it works, you know, uh, what ends up happening with it. Uh, I can tell you one thing for sure, though. Anytime an alternative payment platform emerges, it is immediately attacked by people who don't want competition with lamestream Silicon Valley. See, what's happened <clears throat> is that these activistic groups, so-called, I don't recognize it as activism, I see it as a harassment campaign. They've gotten Silicon Valley to back down and start censoring people, their content, preventing them from monetizing things, you know, AdSense and so forth. And trying to go after payment processors, get them to ban certain people. They've got them where they want them. So if an alternative uh, crops up, that threatens to break containment, essentially, in their minds. See, they've, they've managed to convince Silicon Valley that it's a good idea to censor things, and they've managed to convince a lot of people through, an, through a, probably a multi-billion dollar, multi-year branding campaign that sort of was hush-hush and behind closed doors. They've managed to convince people that, like, Tim Cook should be deciding what we can and cannot say. <laughs> what, what, what is or is not appropriate to be anywhere on the mainline internet. It's very funny. It's like, uh, they, they ban some, they're like, okay, you can't raise money. Oh, make your own payment platform. They make that, it gets deplatformed. They make their own, their own platform for their payment campaign. Visa shows up and shuts them down. Uh, so what you've got is a situation where you've got collusion. Um, it, it is, you know, craptivism, it's a harassment campaign, and it's being aimed, and this is what I spoke to the Sleeping Giants about. The problem isn't even, for, for a lot of the people that are getting caught up, now I oppose censoring anyone who's not breaking any law, but even for a lot of the creator community, people who have mundane political beliefs, they don't even so much care about mob deplatform the bigots. It's just that every time one of these platforms gets fucked, if, if Patreon has lost users, and it's affected my income, and an alternative comes along, and it gets deplatformed. I've 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 been robbed of a potential uh, secondary platform in which people who no longer want to do business with, engage in capitalism with that other business, they could have supported me elsewhere. Uh, they are no longer capable of doing that via Subscribestar, and the reason for that is not, hey, the site itself. It's really extreme out there. It says vile things. No, the re the reasoning behind it is, oh well, they're sheltering racists or something. Oh, yes, yes, again, Sargon of Akkad, the bitter, bitter, virulent Nazi, just totally Hitler. Uh, then the second piece of news uh, as, uh, is that Sam Harris has actually canceled Patreon. I believe he's one of their top 20 users by income. And Sargon was right. He's probably in the top 100. <laughs> so they've lost. And now with Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin threatening to shut down, that's a hell of a lot. And the, the problem for someone like me, and again, I'm reiterating this to groups like the Sleeping Giants and the Jared Holtz and the Will Summers. Think that these think that there are people who are, are despicable on these platforms. Okay. Are you making any allies among the creator community when, in a sense, you target people like me, or people? some of these people are literally on the left, they do political commentary, you know, Progressive Voice sets up a Patreon, has, has some patrons, and then those patrons, there, there's, there's cross-support for him and his political content, and potentially Ruben, or Sam Harris, or Sargon, or myself, or something like that. That person leaves the platform, he's losing money too. You're literally taking money from independent left-wing creators also. You're taking money from asthmatists, from bodybuilders, from people who do fucking gaming videos, from people that don't care about politics. 
So as a makeup channel loses a hundred dollars a month, they're like, well, shit, I can't quite make my rent, and you are partially responsible for that. So to sit there and pretend that you're that you're like some glorious revolutionaries fighting fascism, you're not fighting fascism. Most of us see it as you're fighting independent content creators, and you are because most of the people impacted are not racists. Most of the people impacted aren't even political commentators. Most of the people that have lost support over the last few weeks in the wake of Sargon being banned, and now, now Harris going, and Peterson and Rubin might go, it'll cause a ripple effect. This is the problem. When it becomes less profitable for creators, they start making less money, they're less likely to care if they just leave the platform altogether and find some other alternative. This could destroy Patreon. Yes, when this many larger creators leave a site, it can leave a gaping hole in it, cause it to be no longer profitable, force it to potentially downsize, to save face. They might have to come out. They might have to, to reverse decisions. Say, okay, yeah, we, we hear the community loud and clear. Sargon's back. He probably wouldn't even rejoin at this point. Neither would a lot of these other people. If it gets to the point where it's no longer fundamentally profitable for me to be on Patreon, I'll leave too. I'll set up a PayPal tip jar. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll set up a permanent GoFundMe, yeah, something like that. Some site that isn't deplatforming people at a whim for no reason. Now, part of it's not Patreon's fault, and I understand this. Part of it is Visa and MasterCard and fucking Venmo and, and Stripe and all these other sort of groups uh, put pressure on these crowdfunding sites. Again, though, the average person impacted by that decision is not Sargon himself. The average person is not far-right, or racist, or extremist in any objective or even in some cases subjective manner. Most of the people using Patreon are not political commentators. But if a person is there, it's a, let's say that a person is more than one-dimensional. They donate to five or six people. They're donating to uh, maybe a sports, you know, commentator, you know, fe a fellow Pats fan or a fellow Browns fan, you know, scares his hen's teeth, but uh, they donate to them. They, they have a couple political commentators, maybe an underground news site, a musician or two, something like, you know, they donate to multiple people. You, can, you know, they've got their day job, they've got enough income, so they donate a little bit to five or six different people. Now one of them gets, now... One of them gets shut down and they say, okay, fuck it, I'm leaving the platform altogether in protest. Well, you know, a lot of people have done that. I've lost, I haven't checked my Patreon this morning, but it's, you know, about $800 a month. That's a lot of money, you know. To, I know it probably wouldn't matter to, like, Jack Conte. I know it probably wouldn't matter to some, to, you know, some CEO of PayPal or something. They don't, you know, consider that, they make that in an hour. Uh, for me, it's a lot of money. And so I tried to find an alternative. Now the alternative gets torpedoed. So I'm glad, like, if, if Torba manages to develop, you know, through Gab, a payment processing uh, ability, yeah, I'm going to use it. And I've heard some scuttlebutt uh, over an idea that BitChute has, has mentioned. I won't uh, mention it publicly. I'm not sure if they're going public with the basic concept. You know, you, you don't want to give your enemies any uh, foreknowledge of your plans that I think could work. Uh, I'd be on board with that, probably. And the, the real thing is, yes, content creators have a right to solicit donations. Look, it's, it's just like ad revenue. Some people think, well, you're not actually creating anything. Yes, you are. You're spending your time entertaining and informing people. What, what else is there to say? Fucking, you're creating videos. Like what? If you, so you go to the movie theater, you expect not to pay anything to watch the movie. Oh, nothing's been created. It's just like images and sound and shit. Doesn't matter. That's not the way that it works. Those sardonic comments are very, very funny indeed. Um, so yeah, there's your double news. A subscribe star has been suspended by PayPal. Uh, it, you know, it's become a Russian crowdfunding site or something. Is it actually run by a Russian? And if so, why should I care? I don't give a fuck. I don't care if it's a, yeah, a Russia conspiracy. Okay, well, base it in, in the Maldives or something next time. Put your server on a coral reef. Put it up in Sea Land or something. Maybe out in Antigua or Barbados. Uh, that'd be funny. Yeah, so I mean, I'm trying to use this other side. It gets deplatformed again. It's, it's like the same old story. And they were crowing about, oh, bit shoot and gab. They, they're they not actually neutral. No, they're pro liberty. And they're pro creator because they host creators. And a lot of the creators that have been kicked off mainline sites happen to be political commentators. The fact that, the fact that a group that has the, the hashtag resist. Uh, socialist fist sort of bullshit in a Twitter profile thinks that someone's far right or an extremist. I, I don't care about your opinions. 
Your opinions are meaningless. You are openly politically biased in every way, politically partisan in every way. And, and it, uh, it's nonsense that Silicon... And, well, really, I'll, I'll say one last thing. Silicon Valley isn't just listening to them in a vacuum. Silicon Valley doesn't want to deplatform people and lose money. What they do want to do, though, is censor their critics. People who stand for free speech, whether they're on the right or left, are at hazard right now. If you've come out as a proponent of free speech, yeah, you're on a list somewhere, basically. Silicon Valley's looking for an excuse to deplatform you. Because they're multi-billionaires. They don't, they don't want populism. They don't want, they don't want progressivism. What they're calling progressive is not progressivism. It's closer to corporate fascism. Yeah, let, let, the, let fucking half a dozen private entities run by a bunch of old billionaires. Let them decide what you can and cannot say on the only main communications platform in the whole fucking world. What a wonderful idea. We can stop rebellions, you know, against ty uh, tyranny. We can stop people from unionizing, maybe. We can crush our independent competitors, which is, I mean, this is anti-competitive. The idea that Silicon Valley and craptivists associated with them whip uh, the legacy media and politicians into a frenzy and attempt to deplatform upstart competitors to mainline platforms it, it is crazy. And then they invoke capitalism and say, well, you know, make, make your own internet base. And it's not capitalism. That's anti-competitive in every way. That's, it's closer to socialism. But that's what they want. They want a controlled internet in which it's a lot like cable. Basically, you've got, you know, a handful of gatekeepers deciding. See, it's, it's not people making the decision. It's only a handful of individuals. It's an oligarchy. That's really what it boils down to. And then, with, again, with Sam Harris leaving Patreon, I expect to lose hundreds more every month. Yes, I expect the platform for political commentators fundamentally is dead now. Unfortunately, and Jack Conte has a responsibility for that and his trust and safety team for not even following their own terms of service. They should not have deplatformed Sargon. They should have, you know, understood that his comments were taken out of context by people who simply do not like him. And then they're going to leave a gaping hole in their own platform and lose tens of thousands of dollars a month that they were getting from, you know, the donations that were circulating around. If Peterson leaves, isn't he depriving him of like three, four grand a month, which would have been their cut or even more than that possibly? That's a lot of money. And if I leave the platform, they're being robbed of several hundred a month too, which they take. That's their cut. Well, that's good money. It's paying, you know, your trust and safety team has uh, fucking wages too, uh, Jack. That's about all. Peace out.